I scientifically tested dozens of wearables to help you decide on the best one to get in 2026. And since this is a new year, I rewrote almost all of my analysis code to show you the results better and more comprehensively than ever before. So let's dive right in to help you decide on the best device to get in 2026, which will hopefully help you stick to your new year's resolutions. And this overview right here basically shows you most of the testing I've done over the last two years with the best devices being on the top right right here. So just select one of these and you're done. Well, okay, there are some new ones here, but this is the most comprehensive overview I've ever made. In this overview, I focus on two aspects, the heart rate tracking performance during exercise and the sleep stage tracking during the night. And these things actually touch on two important and interrelated aspects, performance and recovery. For now, I'm excluding those devices that are just able to do one of those two things. So just sleep or just sports, but more on those in a video coming soon. By the way, for those of you that are new to the channel, my name is Rob and I'm a postdoctoral scientist specializing in biological data analysis. Now this overview right here shows a lot of data. Along the horizontal axis, we have the average heart rate correlation with the reference during three exercises, indoor cycling, outdoor cycling, and running. And the better they perform, the more towards the right they are. And on the left right here, we're looking at sleep, which is the average sensitivity, so the average agreement with my reference EEG device, which means that the more to the top a device is, the better is its agreement with the sleep reference. Now again, that means that the devices here on the top right are performing best in both heart rate tracking and sleep stage tracking. Well, at least on my body. And an important note here is that I'm a healthy, more or less normal sleeper. If you have sleep issues, for instance, the sleep stage tracking is likely far less good. And if you have some kind of defect in your heart that makes your heart beat slightly different from normal, that will also likely get you worse heart rate tracking. But still, my results seem to be a decent representation of the overall performance of different devices. So let's take a look at the different categories, starting with heart rate tracking during sports. So let's clean up the overview for a second. So if we focus on just heart rate tracking during sports, I would try to get devices with at least an average correlation of, let's say, 0.9 but preferably 0.95 or higher. So that would be roughly the devices above this dotted line, or if we're being a bit more lenient above this dotted line right here. So either above this or above this. And we can see that definitely includes the Apple Watch in my case, several Pixel devices, also an Apple Watch Series 11 right here. So we see roughly the same performance, I would say in terms of heart rate tracking for the Apple Watch Series 11 and Apple Watch Ultra 3. But we can also see, for instance, that the cheaper Mi Band 10 did quite good on me. Also the Amazfit Helio strap worn on the biceps. We also see several Huawei devices are doing really well, but it's also pretty clear that on the sleep tracking axis, they're quite low. So these are all the devices that have pretty good or pretty great heart rate tracking. And on the edge, I would say are, for instance, the Whoopstrap MG, but also the Galaxy Watch right here, some other Amazfit devices, but also some Garmin devices did quite well on me, like, for instance, the Forerunner 970, but also the Garmin Forerunner 570, for instance, right here. But why do we care about heart rate tracking performance? Well, this is actually pretty important for many of us trying to optimize our workout intensity by training in a certain heart rate zone, for instance. Now, measuring heart rate during exercise is actually quite hard. That's why sometimes a correlation of 0.9 or higher is already good enough, but 0.95 is really preferred. So now we've discussed many of the devices and brands that perform best on me in terms of heart rate tracking. But which devices are best for sleep stage tracking? Why do we care about this? Well, sleep is important for your recovery and general health and understanding it better can help make you decisions to improve your sleep quality. Now, the best devices here, I think, should have an agreement or sensitivity roughly above 75% or higher. 
so roughly above this area right here so let's draw a line again so they should be roughly above or along this green line right here and which devices do we have in this area well the aura ring actually did quite well on me the galaxy watch 8 is also along this area but because the Galaxy Watch Ultra 2 and the Galaxy Watch 8 Classic did a bit worse, I think the truth is that all of their performance lies somewhere in the middle here, so maybe around this area right here. So I think probably the Galaxy Watch isn't a good enough sleep stage tracker yet. The Apple Watch is doing well, it actually recently updated their sleep stage tracking. There was a deep sleep issue with the Apple Watch, which is still somewhat there, but definitely improved. And also Google is doing really well with their Pixel watches right here. And finally, the Whoop strap is performing really well. So to summarize, if you want a device that does both heart rate tracking and sleep stage tracking, in terms of sleep stage tracking, the best brands, because usually all devices from the same brand have the same sleep stage tracking, are the Aura Ring, the Apple Watch, the Pixel Watch and all other Google Fitbit products, and also the Whoop Strap. In this case, it tested the MG, but I expect that, for instance, the Whoop Strap 5.0 will give you the same performance. So those right here are the best sleep stage tracking, which you can some degree use to optimize your sleep, for instance, by helping you understand the factors that negatively affect your sleep. However, why do we want better sleep? Well, we want to live longer, feel better, and also hopefully perform better, also in sports. And in the end, there are a few brands right here that seem to give an overlap between both good sleep stage tracking and good heart rate tracking. So you can perform ultimately during your sports because of good sleep and then also understand your sports with good heart rate tracking. But we'll discuss those results in a second. First off, I wanna briefly ask for your support in keeping this channel financed. This year, I'll try to keep this section a bit shorter than in last year. So I wanna ask you to consider becoming a YouTube member using my general Amazon affiliate link before making any purchase. You can even bookmark it and doesn't cost you any extra. I also have the best discount link out there for devices such as the Whoop Strap, but also the Aura Ring. So if you wanna support and save yourself the maximum amount of money, use one of my affiliate links down below. Thanks for considering and let's get back to the results. So what are the devices that are good at both heart rate tracking and sleep stage tracking? Well, if we take the same cutoffs as before, I would say they should be roughly in this area right here. I'm being a little bit more lenient with the sleep stage tracking just to include the Galaxy Watch 8 and the Apple Watch Series 11. But it's pretty clear here that if you're on Android, for instance, your options are either a Pixel Watch 3 or Pixel Watch 4. Or of course the Whoop Strap, which is agnostic to which platform you are on. On the other hand, on iOS, you cannot use a Pixel Watch, but you can use an Apple Watch. And potentially the Galaxy Watch would be good enough, but it doesn't quite have the quality in terms of sleep stage tracking and heart rate tracking as for instance the Pixel Watch or the Apple Watch. But Samsung is getting closer and closer over time. So if you're already in the Samsung ecosystem, maybe the Samsung Galaxy Watch 8 Classic or Samsung Galaxy Watch 8 or even Samsung Galaxy Watch Ultra would be the right choice for you. However, the overview as we see it here is very high level, so a lot of nuance is missing in terms of heart rate tracking and sleep stage tracking. But I'll make separate videos for those over the next two or three months. I actually wrote a lot of code to make this plot right here and also a bunch of other plots for the new analysis of the heart rate tracking and the sleep stage tracking. And I'm really excited to show you those results in future videos over the next few weeks and months because I really think things have improved with the new analysis. So don't forget to subscribe. I actually thought it might be an afternoon of work to get the new code ready, but in the end, it took me a lot of my free time over Christmas and New Year's. So I think in the end, I spent maybe three full days to get it to work in a way that I was happy with. So take a moment to wish a Merry Christmas and maybe laugh a bit at past me who recorded a small segment thinking I would get it done in one afternoon. Hi, past Rob here. But in order to do that, I actually need to write a bunch of code because my old code wasn't designed to look at each release date separately. So I just spent about half an hour to an hour finding the different release dates for the different devices I've tested over time, making a big Excel sheet. And now I'm actually writing this code right here where there is a release date segment. 
and with this release date we should be able to find out which of the watches of 2025 did best in terms of heart rate tracking and then I also need to write even more code for the sleep stage tracking so you can find out which is the best smartwatch of 2025 and which is the best smartwatch to buy in early 2026 now. Now, by the time you're seeing this video, it's already 2026, so happy new year, but I'm still working on it now. And right now it's still Christmas time. So happy new year and let's go back to future Rob. Future Rob here again. In the end, as you just saw, I did get it done, but there are a few more important factors to look out for when deciding on what device to get if you wanna get more fit and healthy in 2026. And those are things I couldn't put in this overview right here. And the two most important factors that are left out from this plot, in my opinion, are the GPS tracking and the app experience slash coaching experience of the app. And let's start with the GPS tracking performance. This is especially important for runners and cyclists. Often you follow programs, for instance, where you go to a certain pace or speed, and it's important that your GPS tracking then is very good. As a general rule here, in my opinion, different sports watches usually perform best. So something like a Garmin device, maybe a device from Coros, Suntu or Polar, those will generally give you the best GPS tracking. Out of the more smart watch devices so far, only really the Apple Watch Ultra 3 right here did really well in my testing. Otherwise, if there's no dual frequency GPS, you will not get the best performance out there. Currently, my favorite models are the Garmin Foreigner 970, the Garmin Foreigner 570, the Coral Space 3, which is this device right here, but I'm actually testing the Coral Space 4 right now. Also, the Suntu Race 2 did really well. And finally, there's the Polar Vantage M3. All of them will likely give you very good GPS tracking performance. However, the issue with all of these sports watches is that their integrated heart rate tracking could be better, only the Garmin for a 970 and also the 570, which is a little bit hidden, but one is right here and the other is right here. Those potentially did good enough. Probably their lighter weight helped out a little bit here, but they were still far from perfect. Now the old Suntu devices really weren't very good in terms of heart rate tracking. The newer ones like the Vertical 2 right here have definitely gotten better. So those are probably up there or close to Garmin devices. And also the Polar Vantage M3 didn't do that poorly on me. So they're close towards getting good enough, but they're definitely not as good as, for instance, Huawei devices, Apple Watches and Pixel Watches. So in those cases, I would recommend you pair a chest strap with your watch to get really good heart rate signal. All of them can generally connect to an external heart rate monitor. So that's what I would recommend if you get yourself a sports watch. Also, the sleep stage tracking on all these kinds of sports devices could be better, but it's likely a limitation of these devices just because it's not the focus of these brands. You just need to decide how important sleep stages are for you. Finally, the app experience and data presentation is also very important because in the end, you actually need to understand your data to interpret it and actually make actionable decisions. And in that regard, there are two brands that stand out in terms of best app, and that's the Whoop Strap and the Aura Ring. In my opinion, and also the opinion of some of my friends and subscribers, their apps are just most comprehensive and give you a good overview of all your health and sports data. Now, as we saw before, the Aura Ring isn't that good at heart rate tracking, so I wouldn't focus on that with the Aura Ring, but they do have one of the best apps out there. The Whoop Strap actually did pretty good in both regards, both in terms of average heart rate correlation and in terms of sleep stage tracking. It isn't quite as good in terms of heart rate tracking as, for instance, the Apple Watch and the Pixel Watch, but already pretty good. In order to get that better performance, you do need to wear it on your biceps. So I have it here under my shirt. You can also wear it with this smaller strap on your wrist. In that case, the heart rate tracking performance of the whoop strap will likely be worse on your wrist than when you wear it on your biceps. Now the sleep stage tracking will likely be equally good no matter where you wear it, but just be aware. So as a complete package for both sports and sleep, I would prefer the whoop strap over the Aura Ring. If it was just about health and sleep, I would slightly prefer the Aura Ring. 
So it really depends where your focus is. And the whoop strap also can get quite expensive over time. So you pay nothing for the device itself, but you pay a monthly subscription, which is likely maybe 20 bucks or so. Whereas for the Aura Ring, you do pay up front for the Aura Ring, but after that, the subscription is cheaper. There is still a subscription model, which I don't necessarily like, but the Aura Ring is probably like seven or eight bucks or so per month. So if you keep it for a long time, in the end, the Aura Ring will be cheaper. However, as I said, as an overall device, if you're also really into sports, I do think the whoop strap is a little bit better. And also the performance with the whoop strap is a bit more gamified. So you actually get a whoop age, sort of an age to optimize, where it's your biological age versus your actual age. And you have to reduce that biological age over time. And that biological age is not necessarily very scientifically founded. However, the factors underneath it that you can actually see and can try to optimize do make sense to me. And I use it myself as a tool to stay healthier. So let me actually show you. So right here, you can see my WHOOP age. So I'm 37 in reality, but according to WHOOP, I'm 25.9. So I'm 11.5 years younger, but it bases that on factors that actually make sense, like your sleep consistency, hours of sleep, time in certain heart rate zones, strength training, steps, VO2 max, resting heart rate, and lean body mass. So if you optimize all of these factors, you get a lower biological age. And for me, that gamification worked better than I expected because I thought I wouldn't be affected by it. But in the end, it's just really nice to see your age decreasing or staying steady over time. Again, if you do decide to get a whoop strap, an aura ring, a Galaxy watch, a Garmin device, an Apple watch, or anything at all on Amazon for that matter, you want to support and likely get the best discount possible Use one of our affiliate links down below. Also, I left out those devices that can just do sleep stage tracking, but not heart rate tracking. So I'll release an updated video on that soon. I can actually show you a little bit of data on that. So right here, I'm just showing you those devices that were released in 2025, where along the horizontal axis, we have that average sensitivity. So the same thing we were looking at before. And along the vertical axis, we have the worst sensitivity. So I want all sleep stages to be good. So both deep sleep, REM sleep and light sleep. So of course we see again that the Apple watches did rather well. So here and here, also the Pixel watches did well. The Whoop strap did a good job. And the Aura ring right here. Also the Galaxy Watch 8, as I said, didn't do bad, but the other Galaxy watches were a bit lower. So again, I think the truth is somewhere in the middle, likely around here. But the one device we didn't talk about yet is the eight sleep pod, which also had really good sleep stage tracking. This is not a wearable, so it doesn't track sports. It's something that goes around your mattress and cools and heats each side of the bed. So it's my favorite sleep improvement device. I'll link a link to that up here. But I actually made a detailed review of the eight sleep pod. Now, again, if you decide to get any of these devices, I have an affiliate link down below. And if you get anything on Amazon, even something as small as coffee beans and you use my link, you support without it costing you any extra. Now, in the meantime, I think you will like this video on the Amazfit Helio strap and this video on the HLE pod.